Parents, if you're about to children, they are grown up, they born to the city, they care less about your own day. Some parents are happy. Some of them resort to even cursing their own children. Cursing is not a solution. How do you cast your own? Only a mad person can cast their own. When you see that's why it's easy to even cast your own child. Wish your child to have a horrible life because they are not supporting you. You should pray for them, forgive them, pray for them to be transformed. So parents, if you cast, if you're casting your children, know that you are casting yourself. The Bible says in Luke chapter 6, from verses 35 to 38, Love your enemies and do good to them. God does not say hate. Chapter 6, Luke 6, 35 to 38. Love it. these people who have wounded you. God is calling you to love them, not to hate them. Love your enemies and do good to them, not do bad. Verse 6 says, Be merciful just as I am merciful. The mercy of God. If God was to deal with us, judge us based on what we deserve, we would all be dead. Be merciful, have mercy, just as your Father is merciful. Verse 7 says, Do not condemn others, do not be condemned. Do not judge others, do not be judged. So when you condemn others, expect condemnation from God. When you judge others actually wrongly, expect the judgment of God. And none of us is saved. Now, let me ask you a question. How many times have you wronged God? How many? So, how many times do you want Him to forgive you? All. Then you never forgive you, and it's all. So today we need to pray for that grace to forgive our enemies all the time. Life. So parents who are cursing your children, please, this fear of your child, today we need the grace of God to remove it. This needs to come up. You cannot be normal if this thing is in. You can't. Even the pain alone cannot make you normal. You can't be normal. That's why the world is doing what they are doing. That's why people are thinking crazy stuff. That's why Sodom and Gomorrah are being destroyed is not enough warning for us to even comprehend accepting an LBGTQ. Even thinking about it, I was born gay. What nonsense in the world today? Where your mom and baby they never accepted you. Mm. There are many people who are meeting like their mother in laws And sisters, you know. And you feel you can justify. You know, I don't know about something, but in Kenya, all mother in laws have become witches. <laughs> when you go to the prophet, the one destroying your mother is your mother in law. The mother in laws, almost all of them, are being born witches. And stupidly, you are accepting, and you have a son who is going to marry very soon, and you will become a mother in law. You will become a what? Another witch. <laughs> it's a demon moving around. <laughs> you probably call your mother in law a witch. Deuteronomy 27 16 says, Deuteronomy 27 16 says, Cast is anyone who dishonors his father or mother. Your mother in law is your mother. When you dishonor, even if she's truly a witch, why not pray for her to be converted? Why did you accept her to be married in the family of witches? You really? Remember, <laughs> <laughs> is telling us what we normally say. We need it to know. But if your God is so strong, you should pray for us to be converted. Love your enemies and look good to them. God did not tell you to cast out. In fact, the Luke chapter 6, the one I told you, when
when you continue reading, the Lord says, the same measure you use unto others will be used unto you. So when you curse others, what comes back? Curses. No wonder this prayer that you follow from our brothers and sisters, televangelists, the prayer that even many Catholics are using today, back to the sender, is such a demonic prayer. Last year, we went to Father to visit some, some young children here in one of the, you call them, the slums, what do you call them? The compounds, one of the compounds. We arrived with Father, we had carried some sodas, some scones, you know, to share with them. Their teachers, some are Catholics, some are Protestants. One of the teachers teaching them songs and all that. They said, before we eat together, we want to dance for you, we want to sing for you. And they are singing the, you know, songs of God, you know, they are praising God. And then they started. After, you didn't come that way. If you didn't come, you had to come, I don't know what happened. Then they started, they started singing. In the name of Jesus, back to the sand and fire. <laughs> I say in the name of who? <laughs> in whose name? That is misusing in the name of people. Even those two disciples wanted to all fire and destroy. What did Jesus tell them? I did not come to destroy, I came to save. How can you use his name to destroy? If you're setting the Holy Spirit fire, it's okay, that is good fire to transform. But the fire we send is to destroy. Back to the sender, let me ask you a question. When you're sending back to the sender, are you sending back good things or bad things? <laughs> evil things, isn't it? So when you're sending back evil, are you an agent of God or the agent of the evil one? Every negative word that is spoken upon others. 
to cancel every back to sender prayer you've ever done. Because it is not lovely. People pray for you, people cry. Asking God to forgive them for doing that. You pray that they'd rather die. The same measure comes back to you. God is not to say you will not die, but your health is not dying. Your business start dying. Your marriage start dying. After the prayers, people went home. Sunday was the final day. Sunday, I am there waiting after mass. We have a short break. Then we go on to the last session. I'll go with the Holy Spirit and we finish. A woman, elegantly dressed, comes to me. And they tell me, Steve, as you see me here, materially, in terms of money, I am blessed. My husband and I are very rich. But I don't know anything called joy in my life. I said, what? You know, we always think that you have a lot of money in your pay. Money is not everything. Money cannot buy joy. Money cannot buy health. Money cannot buy peace. It can't. If you don't have God in here, you won't have those things, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. I asked her why. She told me, Steve, I have eight illnesses, sicknesses in me. Some of them terminal. Eight. One person carrying eight diseases. She started mentioning them. H. pylori, migraine headache, constant, high blood pressure, kidney failure, a man, the eight. She told me, Steve, at night, when I went to bed, I will wake up at least eight times in the night to go to the washroom because of the kidney challenge. Now, when does she sleep? She told me, Steve, if I come for you the food that I don't eat, you'll be surprised. I started counting the food. Every type of food that I mention, she does not eat. So, what is the money for? I was surprised. Then now she came to the teaching of yesterday. She said, Steve, when you talked about back to the sender, that is me. And I know there are many people here saying the same. She told me I've used it. Even my own husband, when he wrongs me, I normally say, back to the sender. <laughs> she told me, Steve, if the people in church are going to be truthful, they tell you almost 90% here. Yeah. If not more, we use that prayer in the Catholic Church, borrowing with all his money. Not everything you hear from televangelists is true. We are borrowing everything. We are even trying to copy them. So she told me yesterday, her heart pains so much because of one thing. This woman loves God. This woman, the only thing she's hoping after all this suffering is that one day she'll have eternal rest. She'll be with God forever and ever. This woman wants to go to heaven more than anything else. But the teaching of the previous day made her realize that she might end up in hell because whoever hates others is a murderer. And they do not have eternal life. You cannot send back evil to people and you love them. You will hate them. And the more you are sending back, the more you are hating them. You are encouraging the demon of hatred in yourself. And you are justified because you are doing evil. That's why you are calling your mother a witch. If your mother in law is a witch, what is a son? <laughs> the child of a liar, the cow, is also a liar, isn't it? So the son of a witch is a witch, a wizard or whatever. So your husband is a wizard. <laughs> and the two of you became one. So you're also a wizard. <laughs> your children are wizards. In the family of witches. <laughs> How can you abuse yourself like that? You are degrading yourself. Can you abuse yourself like that? The intellect is impaired. The emotions are broken. That's why you're even abusing your mother in law. Instead of praying for her, 
That is why when you're going shopping and you're going to your mother-in-law's, you do a dad shopping. And you're going to your mother, you do proper shopping. There's one man who realized that. Whenever they're going to his mother, the wife does some very dull shopping. But when they're going to the mother-in-law, she does the mother shopping. So one day he told the wife, tomorrow we are going to see mom. And she thought it's a guy's mom. And she went and did horrible shopping. And the following day they got into the car and they started driving. At some point, he took a turn that said, this is not my mother-in-law. This looks like this. He said, where are we going? We are going to mom. But I thought this the other side. No, but your mom is my mom. No, no, we need to go back to the shop. No, where are you shopping yesterday? And when they got there, the mother who was used to goodies, got the package. She said, my daughter, are you normal? <laughs> Is this what you said to bring me? She was in trouble. She was demeaning the man, the, the, the mother, to her husband. Stop demeaning yourself by abusing your mother-in-law. Your mother-in-law gave you a husband. For that alone is enough to respect her forever. Cast is anyone who dishonors his father and mother. That's why we are like this. Okay. So let me go back to that place. As I try to summarize, then we go to her session. This woman told me she was very happy because she really wanted to go to heaven, but she realized she might end up in hell because of coping this desire. How many things are we coping from our brothers? We've already protested. You are protesting with them from in the church. The woman told me that they have done prayers for her condition for years. She has gone for deliverance sessions, many, not one. She has had many masses in her house, and they are so blessed. They have done exposition in her house. They have adored Jesus in that house. But she's been asking, how comes God that you're not answering my prayers? The way I'm dedicated. You can be a dedicated mother. Then she told me what really shocked me. She told me yesterday when he told us to pray, I prayed. I forgive my enemies. I cancel every negative word I've spoken. And I told God, the ones I can't remember, anything bad I've said to other people, every time I said back to the sender, I destroy those words. May you bless them. Bless their marriages. Bless them. She started praying positively for her, for her enemies. God says, the same measure you use unto others comes to The hardest thing is to pray for your enemies positively. But that's what we need to do today if you want to hear. Radical. Change your attitude. The woman says, after praying and crying that day, you can imagine canceling all those bad things you've said upon others. Praying for them, wishing them well. Even the husband said, May my husband forgive me. All the return to send them back to the center that I've done, may I break them in the name of Jesus. Bless my husband. Blah, blah. She prayed. She says, Shockingly, after going home, as usual, she normally sets an alarm for morning because she has to wake up eight times. In the morning is when the sleep comes. That night, while she's telling me the following is Sunday, yesterday I slept. I did not wake up even one time. I was woken up by the alarm. Can you give a clap for the Imagine just forgiving, letting go this pain, allowing Jesus to remove this. She slept like a baby. The migraine headache was gone. The Lord was already repairing the kidneys. That's why she did not wake up eight times. She was woken up by the alarm and she was telling me, Steve, for the first time in my life today, I feel like I have money. Then we had the Sunday session, we prayed again. I went to find God. On my way back from Mary with Mombasa, I sent her a text on Monday morning. 
I asked her, and how did you sleep last night? You know, you know we are human. Afraid maybe this night was not as good as the other one. She told me I slept like a baby. The next time I heard from her was two weeks later. When she called me, I was expecting trouble. But this time she said, me see, my sister left the Catholic Church. She has so much trouble. I want to give her a number to call. She was no longer telling me about her kidney failure, about her headache. She was talking about her sister. When you conceive Jesus, you think about others. You take Jesus to others. You are no longer selfish. And that's what we need to do today. You cannot conceive Jesus like this. He cannot sit in that heart. Jesus will be poked. The Holy Spirit, can you sit here? Where? There's no space. Yesterday I said that even religious sisters are human beings. They come from our families. One sister, I remember when we had a session like this, during prayer she manifested a lot. And after healing, the minister sat down with her and asked her sister, what is going on? And she explained her history. The father used to be very tough, beating them, and she hated men. Because she hated men, she's wrong to say, I will never be married to a man. So she decided to become a the easiest place to be. A she became a religious sister to avoid men because her heart is for the sisters. <laughs> God is good. Now, the most interesting thing, her sister explained, one of the sisters in the community, she was there now to help in the session. She asked sister, but sister, how comes when we're in the chapel, we are praying, wherever we leave you alone, you run away outside? She said, oh my God. I said, what is it, sister? She started explaining. She said, you know, because I hated men, I could not remain. She could not stand with a man alone. She was afraid of men. So she said, now, in the chapel, when you all go and remain inside there, I'm afraid because inside there there's a man called Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Irrational because of the pain. When you have these things, you cannot think normally. You can't think normally, you can't. You see people making crazy decisions. You see people wanting to commit suicide. This. He feels what is life for. You kill yourself, you go to hell forever. Have you done yourself a service? Separate the service from a frying pan. To the eternal fires forever and ever and ever. So today, any spirit of death, anybody who's had those kind of things today, when the Lord is moving this thing, that spirit is gone in the name of Jesus. Amen. God is good. All the time. Let me share about uh, I love finish with this. On that particular area. About uh, a priest, a friend of mine, a friend of Madame Otunga, and he has shared his testimony many times often, and that's why I'm sharing it. I don't know how many have heard or they have met uh, Father James Kurasa. Of course, Father, you've heard about him. He's an amazing man of God. But like I said yesterday, and I repeat, priests and religions and human beings, they come from our families. The same wounds they've gone through it. They also need healing as much as we need healing. A religious system like this or a priest will only wound people in the community and even the Christians because you can only give what you have. <coughs> Father Brasta is a Rwandese and then uh, he, he had two sisters who are slightly older. The father was very, the mother was very loving, but the father was at this place near him. So he says, wherever the father came home, and he found father jolly and smiling and laughing, 
he would slap them very hard. Bah! Why is smiling like women? <laughs> so Father, this smiling is for women. Father in, fa father in the making, eh? It was Father in the making. That's what you're made of. So he would forget that the father goes to work and start playing and smiling. When he hears the father coming, he goes to a corner. He coils to be serious like a man. Father comes again. Bah! Why are you coiling yourself like a woman? <laughs> he says he got confused. He got what you can call an identity crisis. He didn't know how to behave like that. And every time the father beats him, the mother would run and pick the boy and say, Don't kill my boy. So naturally, who is he going to love? <laughs> who is he going to hate? <laughs> and the father will say, This woman is poisoning my children. Mm -hmm. Be a father. Be present. They will love you. If there's any poisoning when you're present, the poison will naturally come out. Because they'll see the poison was not. But when you're not there, the poison will work. So by God's design, and I know some of us here, we have a lot of bitterness with God, because maybe took a loved one, believing the young father Burasa, the mother died, and was left with his father. The boy didn't even know what death is. And he's asking, Mama, Mama, they didn't know how to explain. So they are telling the boy, Mama, dead. Mama, what is dead? He didn't know what it is. So they try to explain. Box, you know, coffin. And they are, they are digging the grave. Grave. Boy could not connect. But the following day, he says, he saw people carrying the box, singing the solemn songs. They are going towards that hole. And the boy is following the container, saying, Mama, Mama. Ma, she thinks the mother will wake up. Then he remembers, Mama, Fox, that beach there. The boy realized the mother is going to be thrown there. The boy ran, jumped in there to go with the mother that remained in his father. Men, I want to tell you, we have really wounded the world. Women have, but men, we have done a disservice to this world in a very way. And may God forgive us. Amen. And some of us are wounded because we are wounded. We don't know any other way to behave, to live, to act. This situation cannot allow you to be a loving, truly loving, bitterness will still come out. So the boy, the men ran and caught the boy, buried the mother, and that was it. After a few, we don't know which months. The father takes them to another home, to another woman. She has her children say, hey, this is your mother. And the mother is another one. The stepmother is another one. She told the two girls and the boy, them, in this house, no lunch for you. That was a welcome. Then he looks at this young boy and says, hmm, you, you can eat lunch, but your sister's out. He says they were living near a forest, which had wild animals. And so they used to eat a lot of potato and beans. And he says when he was given potato and beans, he would eat a little bit of beans, then eat two potato and spirit ones. Go out, pretend that he's going to pee, but exactly going to feed the sisters. The toddler became the provider. Where is my father, the provider? Pay. One day the stepmother tells him, go there to the forest and bring me firewood. And their wild animals possibly go and die so that they don't inherit the property of their father. The poor boy obeyed and went to collect firewood. What can he collect apart from sticks like this that I have? And the boy who is collecting sticks, he says, he had some animal on the tree making noise. He looked up. It was a leopard. The boy alone.
because of hatred. He is not my son. Let him die. He had the leopard, it, it rose up, you know, and really making that noise ready to pounce. And the boy started peeing on himself as he explains himself, crying and peeing on himself, holding the fire. And then, at that moment, he remembered when the mother of the light told him, You have another mother in heaven, and she trusted mothers, not fathers. And so the boy said, She looked to heaven and said, My mother in heaven, help me. And he said, Unbelievably, the leopard came down, jumped onto another branch, jumped down, and it went. The mother in heaven interceded for me. They saw him coming from the forest, the dangerous forest, alone. They were angry with him. How can you go there alone? And the stepmother had, and she knew it would be fear. She came out running. You stupid boy, who told you to go there? How can you go there alone? Bah! The father in the making, the priest in the making, Chapter 1, 
verses 19 and following. Naomi is bitter with God, and there are people who are really bitter with God. Naomi says, when he went to the foreign land, I had a husband. When he went to the foreign land, I had two boys. When he went to the foreign land, at least we had some property. But now, my husband is dead, my two boys are dead, I have two daughter-in-laws, I have nothing. When she's coming back to her land with Ruth, to say that whole way, your people will be my people, your God will be my God. And the poor say, Naomi, is this really Naomi? The excitement is Naomi. She tells them, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. Naomi is a blessed name. Don't call me the blessed. Call me Pay Mara. God has caused me pain. There are people here, you are very angry with God. Being angry with God will not make God be any less angry with God. He remains God. I am the one to suffer. God is perfect. Even what you don't understand is still perfect. No wonder 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 25. I spoke about it yesterday. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 25. The Bible says, What appears to be the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom. And what appears to be the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. So even though it might appear like God made a mistake, He's still telling you, just embrace it because my wisdom and yours is like uh, heaven. When our loved ones die, mourning is allowed, but mourning should be for a time. You cannot mourn forever. Sometimes you mourn forever. We have bitterness with God. Now let me ask you a question. Whose property are you? If you decide to take this property today, would you question me? The most important thing is for me to be ready because he can take me any day. And he has wonders in his word. He's saying, You'll come like that. Hey, so, the fact that your beloved went, it is only good to tell God, God, yes, I'm hurting as a human being. Give me the grace to heal. Heal me, God. Take the pain away from me and pray for that soul. In fact, what you should really do is to pray for that soul to be in heaven. If the soul is in heaven, there's no loss. Because we are all headed there. You know, there's one song that we normally sing in Swahili. He says, he normally sang, especially during either uh, funerals or when people are mourning. Ninge kuwa na mabawa, ninge ruka hadi binguni. Ninge kuwa na ufunguo, ninge kuwa mlango wako. Ninge nyuma ni mwako, ni kuwimbi. If I had wings, I would fly to heaven. If I had a key, I would open heavens and get into heaven, be in the presence of God forever. Let me ask you a question. If Jesus was to come here right now and give people wings, you just fly, you enter heaven today, you enter heaven, you live with him forever in heaven. How many would accept it? All of us. Ask a neighbor, would you even tell your husband that? You just go. Can you imagine we all want to go to heaven? If you are sure, if you see others going to heaven, you say, ah, give me the wings. Give me the wings. You can't let it go. You don't even tell it, anybody only buy it. Yes, I can go. Your husband will like, where did she go? Yes, I can go. Maria will be like, but he learned to say, no, he was given wings. He forgot me. <laughs> the second question. Since you all want to fly and go to heaven, how many of you are ready to die? <laughs> One, two, or three. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when we say your body will die, but your soul and spirit will never die. When God is in you here, 
you allow this pain to come up and God is sitting in you. When the body dies, the soul is given wings and you enter heaven. Heaven is not a place. Heaven is a state. It's not a place that you fly and fly two days. Just say, mm -mm. Immediately, the separation of body and soul. We are in a new state. Heaven is just here. God is only present. It's everywhere. It's a state. So even if your beloved went, what you need to pray is the grace of God that they see heaven. Because we are all going anyway. We are all going. We are all candidates. Look at the name of <laughs> We are candidates. <laughs> God is good. Now, look at this. Let me add one more. Which of the, the one that I've not talked eh? There's an area of your heart you have not talked about there. Eh? That area I've not mentioned, that one is also there. There are areas that I've not, I've not mentioned everything. I'm sure the area that you have not had. May the Holy Spirit show you which area that I've not had. Do you want to remain like this? These people in their here, would you? Be able to love them. What will happen? You will hate them. When you hate them, you are making it worse for yourself. When you cannot forgive them, please open the water for me. I want to tell you the medicine for this. The first thing you need to do is to accept that you are sick. You cannot be like this and you be no more. You cannot be like this and be okay. We are all sick. We are all sick. Thank you. We are all sick. So we need to accept first of all that we are sick. Number two. We need to sincerely repent. Because we have contributed to this in one way or another for ourselves or towards others. Even though you are wounded, it is possible that you have wounded others. If you have never wounded anybody, raise up your hand. We call you a saint now. <laughs> we have wounded others. And if we have wounded others and we need to be forgiven, we only need to realize that we can only be forgiven if we forgive others. Even the prayer of our Father, we pray every day, forgive us our sins as we have. Many a times we cheat God because we have not, but we tell him as we have. So we need to accept that we are sick and we need to sincerely repent for wounding others and for accepting to remain wounded because the grace of God has always been there. Number three. For you to heal, must forgive these people. Must. Forgiveness is in three levels. Number one, you forgive yourself. It doesn't matter what the horrible thing you did. It doesn't matter. You need to forgive yourself. If God forgives, if He died because of our sins, who are you going to forgive yourself? So you need to forgive yourself for whatever mess you've done in your life. You cannot undo it, but you can let go. Number two, okay, we did the forgiveness. You need to forgive others who have wronged you. All others. If you fail to forgive one person, you are a man of God, as we read in 1 John 3. Anyone who hates, hates another is a what? Murderer. And they do not have eternal life in themselves. First letter of John chapter 3, verse 15. Number three in forgiveness or ABC, you need to forgive God. God never makes a mistake. God is never wrong, but sometimes we carry him in bitterness. Sometimes you feel that it's wrong. Though it's not wrong, let go of that part of you 
has bitterness with God, the bitterness is only killing you. It is not making God to be lesser. You are the sufferer, not God. And forgiveness is this. Just look at it. And forgiveness is like taking poison in a glass. You take poison, you drink it. You swallow and put the glass down. Then you're waiting for your enemy to die. <laughs> Who's going to die? The poison is in you. This pain is in you. It's not in the other person. He may be having his own pain or own pain. But maybe he went for a session like this. He was able to let go and he or she got healed. But you in Osaka are not able to sleep because of these people. When you remember them, you're not able to sleep. You are tossing in bed the whole night. And the guy is in Kenya. You in Lusaka, you cannot sleep because of somebody in Kenya. Ask yourself, is that being normal? <laughs> somebody is tens of thousands of miles away and you cannot sleep here. That's a normality. When these people are in your heart, in your soul, you are carrying them naturally. You are heavy awake. You start having migraine headaches. There are people here with migraine headaches. Not because you are sick, but bitterness. The poison in you. Because you are emotionally wounded. And let me tell you, emotional wounds or spiritual wounds are more painful than physical wounds. You start with the knife, I'll feel a lot of pain. I'll go to hospital treated, injections. After two, three days, the pain is gone. I remain only with the scar. Emotional. When your soul is wounded, the boyfriend has left you. He impregnated you and left you. You might live with it all your life. Mama said 40 years, and she was afraid of something. The records are in the soul. Only one person is able to erase them. Only Jesus, if you allow him, if you conceive him. So we need to remove the poison today. to sincerely thank you for tuning in into this channel youtube channel of steve wa yesu and if you like the teachings on this uh, uh, channel you may click on the like uh, icon and also on the subscription button and on the notification bell so that every time a new teaching is uploaded on this channel you get a message on your phone thank you so very much 
I may God bless you. Bye-bye.